Hey guys, welcome back to Average Mike's. Today we are going to work on part three of the arcade build series. And today you don't get to see my ugly face. We're going to be on the computer setting up the uh, launch box with the emulator's meme and retro arc and importing our ROMs. The ROMs will be for an arcade. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega. Yeah, so let's get started here. So first, we're gonna set up MAME, and that is strictly for the arcade games. One of the things I learned about MAME is that they're constantly updating. So they'll have different versions, and I can show you here. So what you wanna do is download meme for the version that you're working with here so as far as the roms go if you search here for meme rom sets they're it's available uh, if you do a google search on rom sets it's available each rom set's going to have the uh, a version for which meme it works with so here you see obviously we have name 0.213 and they also have older versions and I believe if you go to downloads they actually have some ROMs here if you wanted to there you go if you go previous releases and you'll see they actually have a lot of our older releases but you want to if you download a full ROM set you're going to want to match up with the version of for the ROM set the version name you want to use so and basically what happens is they update the the ROMs in each version so you'll have new ROMs for each version as well as fixes, bug fixes, etc. So you want to make sure, so if you were to download a ROM set for version 201, if you use main version 1.9, whatever, some of those games might not be available for the ROMs that you have. So, so some of those ROMs aren't gonna show up or not gonna be able to be played. On the flip side of that, if you downloaded a newer version, there might be the, the way, there might have been a fix for a game that you have to, that will, won't allow it to work the way that the ROM set is made. So hopefully that makes sense, but ideally you want to keep on the same version, if not close to the version that you have for the ROM set. So what we're going to do is pick the version so i'm going to go with dot uh, 201 i believe and we are running a 64-bit version of windows so i'm going to click on that and run it. save file now i had temporarily set up this machine on a virtual box image the reason why I'm saying that is I currently have the machine. This isn't the machine that I'm using for the arcade. It's just a machine I have that's blank that I can show you how to set it up. And then I'll, I'll jump into the actual machine uh, later in this video and show you the final result. So it looks like it might have finished downloading. While we're in the web here, we're going to grab RetroArch. I'm going to click on download. Again, you pick which version you're running, Windows 10. Grab the download 64 bit or 32 bit with the download version of it. We'll save that. And finally, what's going to let us play everything or give us a nice interface 
thing you'll see is the launch box. Download it here. Save file. So what I have here is a folder. You know what you want to do is put a make a folder of games. And what that basically is is I have the different consoles uh, with the games inside. Now I picked a couple from each console that I'm going to import. It's not all that I have, but what, I, what happens is when we're going to import these games, it'll go a lot faster for me to display how to set everything up. So as you can see, we have here one for Sega, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, PlayStation, although we won't do PlayStation as of yet, Atari, Game Boy Advance, so and then here I have I picked three random ROMs for the arcade uh, and main so all right so let's set up launch box English Next. Okay. By default, it's going to want to put it in your user profile. But I'm going to change it to just that C prompt here. Great desktop icons. Okay, now the launch box has completed installing. This is just a welcome screen if you click on that box and then Sorry, hit close. Let's just stay away. And we can just close out of this for now. So what we want to do is minimize this for now. Go to our C drive. And we have launch box here. Now Let's take our games and drag them into here. And the idea here is that you should be able, we're gonna set it up to be able to take the whole launch box folder and be able to move it anywhere to any different, you can save it, take it off, put it on a hard drive, save it. Uh, you could take it onto another PC, and just load it right back up as long as it's same Windows 10, 64-bit, uh, or however you have yours configured. But essentially, you can take that folder, drop it in the C drive, and play it on any machine. So, we added our games folder somewhere. Oh, there it is. So, we also want to create a new folder and we'll call this emulators. Now there are a ton of emulators out there. I'm going to show you main for the arcade and RetroArch again for all the other consoles. Uh, if you do want to get into some of the more advanced consoles like Nintendo Wii, 
um, Xbox Law or Xbox 360 or what have you. Um, you may want to look into other emulators. Uh, one's called Dolphin, I heard, is pretty good. Otherwise, uh, if you stick into since our arcade has a joystick, eight buttons each player, uh, I'm going to keep it for now going to consoles and games that only need that, that amount of buttons. Once you get into even Nintendo 64, uh, PlayStation, where you start having multiple shoulder buttons and joysticks, it's it's a little hard to play on the, um, you know, just eight buttons and a joystick. You're gonna need to uh, buy a, a controller and then you can play those games. A USB controller. We are going to set up um, a, a USB ports in the front to do that, uh, but I'm not buying a controller yet until I feel like we've exhausted the games that we have because we have tons of games that we can use uh, retro style. So in our emulators folder here, I'm going to go back to our download folder. So if you don't have an unzip program yet, you're going to need to get one. WinRAR, W-I-N-R-A-R -R is a good program that I use. It's free, uh, and, but essentially it will ask you to unzip. We're going to change where we want to unzip the folder. And we're going to put it in the C drive. Launchbox, emulators. Okay, my first mistake here. What I actually wanted to do was create a folder called name and extract it to that. But easy fix. Take these in there. Take these. Okay. Now RetroArch will install that now. Let's make a new folder. RetroArch. Okay. Go back to our downloads. Find RetroArch. Let's extract two. C drive, Launchbox. emulators, retro arc. Okay. Now, in our main folder, we are going to keep those ROMs separate from the rest of the games. And we're going to dump them in here. So now we can start importing. Back to Launchbox. First, we have to set up our emulators. Manage emulators. Add emulator name. Let's do main first. There you go. Application path, that's where the emulator uh, run icon is. So it's going to be this guy right here. If you were to click on this normally, uh, it would be, it would launch you into main. But Launchbox needs to know how to launch main. Therefore, you have to show where the application file is. And that should be good. Okay. Now we have to add retro mark. Retro arc. We're going to click um, emulators again. 
RetroArch. And there's our application file there. I'll click on it. Now, one of the things uh, we need to do, or I want to show you, is here's all your core files, or at least the ones that are mapped. So, um, if you look at, say, Nintendo 64, this is the core file. So, when we go to import, or when we go and import the games, you have to install the core file in RetroArch. Once you install that core file, this will disappear. If you, RetroArch has a ton of different core files for each console, but you have to make sure that you pick this core file that's mapped to. You can change this if you want, if for some reason RetroArch doesn't have the file um, available in, in the available to download in RetroArch, then you can change it by just uh, picking it here. But for now, we're going to leave it alone. Okay. Don't close. Alright, so let's import some stuff. So, we'll start with MAME. Get our arcade games. Little ROM files. Alright, next, we're going to add the directory where the games, the ROMs are. So, the main, the main ones, if you remember, I left it in a main folder. And we're going to click on ROMs. Okay. Click on next. Platform, it's just arcade. for me. Next. Choose emulator. That would be main. Uh, use the files. So, so this is where if you don't prepare beforehand and if you want to keep it all on the launch box folder so that it can be mobile, uh, you either move the files where it needs to be in the launch box game folder. It can do it for you if you choose this box or you can copy it to that folder. But since I already moved everything, we're gonna use the files in the current location. And that's good enough what we have here. You can certainly search Wikipedia. Click next. Now, I do have an account. This is a free account. They do accept donations if you wish to donate. Otherwise, it is free. It just gives you more available covers and extras for each game. Uh, it's definitely worth going to get an account. Okay, so here's the added stuff. Then we can. Would you like to try? No, that's fine. Uh, for here, I do select world. It is up to you. And you do want to, if you download a full ROM set, you want to skip all these nonsense games unless you're looking for something specific. Next. ROM sets come with a ton of games. Okay, so there's a three that I did. So it's going to go out. It's going to download any data it can for it. And import the ROMs. Okay, so now we have the arcade game ROMs imported in, at least the ones that I had put in that folder. Now, one other thing that I learned that you have to do with main in order for this to work is to actually go into the main ROM or the main application and change the directory path of where these games are located. Even though you put them in the ROMs folder or the main emulator, basically where they're supposed to be, you still have to tell it where it is. So for some reason, my virtual machine has issues loading MAME itself to change the directory. So I'm gonna show you my 
production actual arcade system here. So if I go to here, users, game, launch box, and emulators, game. Oh, that's Rob, sorry. Let's go down to me, 64. Load this up. And it's kind of cut off here, but essentially what you want to do is go into configure options, I believe. Configure directories. Rob. And as you can see, I have it in my uh, actual arcade box that I'm using. I have it as users, gamer, launch box, emulator's name, and then Rob. So all you would have to do is add folder. I can add one. Essentially for this situation, or for the one that I'm showing you, what you would end up doing is just doing this, and then you would have launch box in here because we put it in C directory. It's one mistake that I made in my actual, but it's, it's not a big deal. Um, you would have launch box here and then you would go into emulators. Um, except for this one, I'm gonna do gamer. And then you would have launch box. Uh, okay, emulators. Yep. Main and props. And you would click on that and press tab to set. So I'm not going to do that on this one though. So. so now we have other uh, games that we want to do. And essentially, it's the same process. So let's go with eh, let's go with Atari. Yeah, so we do ROMs. Games. And folder. Load. Emulator. No. Sorry. Games. Atari 2600 ROMs. Okay. And essentially, you go through the same process. Uh, what do you want to. What platform is this for? It's Atari 2600. There we go. Next. And we're going to be using RetroArch from here on out. Again, we're going to use files in the current location. We're going to leave the recommended checkbox there. The, again, Emu Movies. It's a great additional resource to grab uh, metadata. All right, click next. Parts the files. We only have three games in there. This is perfect. And I'll load them up. I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, now we have arcade and we have consoles. On the consoles, we have 2600. And there's the three games. And then seem to load the box art for that, which is fine. So we're going to continue on here. We're going to import. Nope. Oh, import. Compile. Next. Now we're going to work on Nintendo. To Nintendo NES, ROMs, Nintendo. Next, we're going to switch this to Nintendo.
because of the entertainment system. Next, press mark again. We're going to use the files in the current location. Next, next. MU Emu movies is now being used. We have the four games in there. We're going to import them. Import it successfully. Click on Nintendo, and there's the four games for Nintendo. Now there's some options. I don't know why. Oh, because I trailed you. There's some options in here. Uh, you can tell it not to display any games that don't have box art, which generally means that it's not like maybe not a U.S. game or what have you. Uh, you'll see in my actual arcade, what I call production arcade. I still have a lot of cleaning up to do. You'll see a lot of you have to find these things and the ROMs that you that you grab, and it. it might not be a valid one, so you have to go and uh, you can either go ahead and play it without that if it works, or just go ahead and delete it. Most likely, it's probably not something that you want, so you just delete it out of your ROMs and then update the ROMs, and you should be good to go. All right, let's get the system here. We're going to import again. ROM files. Next. Let's do Sega. Sega Genesis. Next, next, absolutely, three games in there. Yeah. Whatever. Good. Good luck. Okay, so now that we have Atari, Nintendo, and Sega loaded up, Sega and Nintendo are going to be the same for every uh, every console, the, the process. So I'm not going to keep going with that. Uh, and I'm, we're going to move on. So essentially, the next thing we have to do is make sure the core files in RetroArch are installed. So what you need to do is go into RetroArch. And then here. As, you, as I showed you before, there's missing core files for all these. So as you can see, Atari 2600 is Stella Libretro. So we're going to write that down. For Nintendo Entertainment System, we have New Topia Libretro. And for Sega Genesis, we have the Genesis Plus GX Libitro. And that is for all the Sega, Sega Master System, Sega Game Gear, Sega CD, Sega 32 x So, we minimize this. Actually, we can close it out. Retroarch. Yeah. 
All right, so to show you how to load cores in RetroArch, I switched over to my uh, actual game, arcade game console computer here. So basically with those application packages we showed you before, what you want to end up doing is going to, in the RetroArch here, go to load core. And these are the ones I loaded. You would want to go to download core and then go through and pick the ones that you need. So for instance, for Atari 2600, it was Stella that we wanted. So there's Stella there. For Nintendo, yeah, Nintendo NES, because it's Nestopia. I believe, and this is why you want to write them down. There's so many different ones. You want to make sure you get the correct one. So for Nintendo, it would be this Nestopia right here. For Super Nintendo, I believe it was We didn't take note of that, but just going off of what I remember, it was one of these SNEX 9X. Might have just been that one there by itself. Um, and then for Sega Genesis, as we see, we have Blast on. Um, Actually, might not be here because I already loaded it. Let's go back. So as you can see, I have here you go Nestopia UE, which is in, which is what I showed you. SNES 9X for Sega it was Blast Uh Here you go. Sorry, it was this one. It was labeled differently, but MS, GG, MD, CD. Um, which is basically Mega Drive, Master System, Game Gear, and CD, which would make sense because if you remember, they were all the same as Genesis Bus GX. Now, if you don't have, if you try to look here and they don't have the one that maybe Launchbox has, which is odd, but I do believe that was the case for Nintendo 64, at least for the version that I am running. You can go ahead and pick. So you have two to pick from. One looks similar to this, but in in Launchbox you can also put the drop down and pick whatever one's on here, and it should work. So that is the case for loading a core. After you load the core, uh, you double click on that game, it should work, and we'll show you that in a second. As far as controls, you want to go down to input here and uh, into here. So user one, but so basically you have up to five users here. And user one binds retro pad. Now retro pad is their virtual controller that you have to then map into uh, your controls here. So depending on whether you have the arcade buttons and joysticks like I have, or you have the uh, uh, an actual USB controller, you would have to configure it to match up to the RetroPad. So essentially what I did here is <clears throat> you have your controller, you would have to select that you know, you do is hit over, you know, game one, one and two. I know mine's backwards for a second, but that's okay. Um, and then you would go ahead and try to set all these buttons. And this is setting the retro pad. And what you would do is you would hit enter here and then hit the button that you want that button to be. If that makes sense. So obviously the up, down, left, right is easy. You have an A button here, a B button here, and then you have a Y in the left. And then what I'll do is I'll give you a link. I'm gonna show them, pull it up. 
a link to then show you how to line up what would be like a Sega controller or a Super Nintendo controller and what buttons they're using for this piece here. So actually we are done in RetroArch, so I will quick show you that. So I'll post this link in the description. So what you see here is the different controls depending on what so here obviously this is the Super Nintendo controller and this is the buttons that line up with the retro pad so as you click if, if you want to configure the Y button on Super Nintendo you have to line it up or this the green button on Super Nintendo you have to line it up with the Y button on retro part left shoulder right shoulder select start here is I believe this is Xbox One, yeah. And this is all the different controls you would have to line up with RetroArch Pad. Um, and then you have PlayStation, you have this goes through everything. Or the Atari, Atari Lynx, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, Master System, Mega Drive. Which is super, uh, which is Sega Genesis, the six button Sega Genesis controller, Nintendo 64, NES, is that, this is uh, DS, yeah, uh, Geo Pocket, PS1, PSP, yeah, so you, as you see, you have all the controllers, and you'll need this when you're configuring um, the controllers. You know, when you start thinking about how you want your controller layout to be, and you have to configure that in RetroArch. So, and this also explains to you how, gives you the options to, there you go, control sheet sheet, kind of explained what I basically explained. It also tells you how to do it on a per core basis, meaning on a per system basis. Even in a per game basis, I believe you can configure which controls you want um, set up. Because obviously, you know, a, a Y button might not be on the controller, the, the Y button on a, a different controller that you want it to be. So you, you, it's better off if you configure per core. That way, you have exactly how it, how it is or you want to play it exactly how the games played on, on a Sega Genesis or a Super Nintendo. So uh, this is a good read. Uh, better off, instead of me trying to explain too much of it, you just go ahead and read this. It'll make sense. And then you can go ahead and configure each core uh, to, your, to your liking for the controller or the arcade buttons um, that you have. So with that, I will close here. And we'll talk about Big Box real quick. So Big Box is part of LaunchBox. That is the licensing part. LaunchBox does not need a license to play. And you can go ahead and I'll launch this just real quick. Get back into my games here. So here is LaunchBox. And here are the games that I have currently. As you can see, Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega, Super Nintendo. Now, I can pick a good one here. I can double click any one of these and uh, load it. So we can just here and click on Battletoads here. So if I double click on it, you can see it starts loading the game. I can exit out. So that's nice. This is nice if you're playing on a computer, you have a keyboard and mouse and you can do that. Now, if you have a system like mine where you all you, I don't want a keyboard and mouse out all the time to pick the games, uh, you're kind of forced into buying what you call Big Box. Now, it was $50 for the lifetime membership. You can buy it yearly, you can re, uh, re upgrade it, or renew it, I should say. But it is a very sweet uh, system here. We'll load it up real quick, kind of give you an idea. 
basically allows you to go through and pick a game that you want without having to use a keyboard and a mouse. It also gives you a nice interface here. So as you can see, I can, I'm using my joysticks and buttons now, and I can go through, pick which entertainment system I want. So I want to go into Sega, go in here. Gives me my, I don't know if you saw it real quick, but it was my recently played systems. I can go in here and pick any game that I want. Oh. And there is a way to, in the options, there is a way to configure how to control this interface and what do you, how do you want to scroll through the menu, which buttons to push to continue to exit, etc. So here's Virtual Fighter. I click Start, and I have all these options. Kind of give me an idea. Um, let's see what flip blocks. Oh, there you go. See, pretty cool. Stop music. I can change the emulator if I want, but I don't want to do that. I can hit start, play here, now loading. This gives you a nice interface and it allows you to start these uh, games without having to use a keyboard and a mouse. Not sure I can hook. Let's click up through here. So that's, a, that's about it for this video. It should give you a good idea how to set all this up for your arcade system. The next video in the tutorial will be finishing up my cabinet, which I pretty much already did, so this video should be out soon. So if you like this video, please go ahead, subscribe, like, it's really appreciated. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one, in the part four, and hopefully the final uh, part final video to finish this arcade up and and uh, on to new better projects.